Well, in this series of videos, we want to be considering the eye. And the best way to learn something in anatomy is to draw it. Not really any substitute for that. And the eye is a bit of a complex diagram, so as you see, I've cheated slightly here. Now, the optic nerve is going to be coming in from the back here. So here we have the optic nerve approaching the back of the eye. And there's going to be a tough fibrous layer around the outside of the whole eye here. And this continues to line the optic nerve. This is the outer layer of the eye, this is the sclera. So that's going to go all the way around here. It is a bit long-winded this method, but if you draw one with me, then you'll learn it much better than any other any other way. Now this is coming to nearly the front. Like this. Let's get it the right way up again. So here we are here. So the eyeball is fairly spherical on this bit. And then what happens is it uh, it bulges out a bit at the front like this. But this frontal bulge is completely continuous with the sclera. And this bit at the front is the cornea, which of course is clear. Now don't worry too much about the names just now, we will be putting the labels on. Then there's another layer just here the second layer, and this second layer is the vascular layer, the choroid. And again it goes all the way around. This is the choroid layer, the vascular layer. And just here it broadens out a bit, like this. And then it continues on down here and we'll see that this structure is the iris. So it broadens out into this ciliary area. And then we have the iris. So what we're seeing is that the sclera is in two parts, this sclera around here, and this cornea at the front, the clear part at the front. Now we can actually draw a division there to make that clearer, but it's actually continuous, it's just that this bit is opaque and that this bit is transparent to let the light through. And we notice that the choroid layer is in three parts. There's the choroid here, then this is the ciliary area here, and then this is the iris. So the sclera is this outside layer going all the way around the outside. That is the sclera. Fibrous tissue. And then the vascular layer is the choroid. I think I might just uh, colour these in a bit actually. So the choroid, we said it's the vascular layer, so we'll colour that in red. This is the choroid. This widened bit at the end is the ciliary body where it widens out at the end. Just here. So this bit this area here is the ciliary body. And again, we could divide this off, although it's somewhat of an artificial division, but this is the ciliary. So this is the ciliary area here, the ciliary body. And that contains the ciliary muscles. Now just bear with me on the anatomy at the moment because we will be looking at the physiology in the next clip. And again, here we, are. Here we have the choroid, this choroid layer. 
taking blood supply to most of the eyeball. Then broadening out in this ciliary area here and then continuing as the iris. And again, we could sort of divide that off. It's a bit artificial, but. So the ciliary, again, the ciliary body and muscle would be there, that bit there. And the iris, this bit here, the iris is the colored part of the eye. So that is the iris there and there. Looking at it from the front, that is the coloured part of the eye that we see just there, the iris. Now, the lens of the eye, which does a lot of the focusing and accommodation, that is a biconcave disc. And it's just there. So this part is the lens. And of course the lens is transparent to allow light through. So just to clarify, I'm going to, the transparent bits I'm going to colour in yellow. So this front bit is the cornea. That's the cornea there, the front bit. So the cornea is the anterior part of the fibrous layer. The sclera is this big bit at the back and the cornea is the bit at the front. I have to colour the rest of the sclera in as well. We'll colour that in blue. This is the fibrous tissue here covering the optic nerve. And this bit gives a lot of the structural support to the eyeball because it's fibrous soft tissue. As I've said, it is completely continuous with the cornea. It's just that the cornea is transparent, whereas this bit is opaque. And if we're looking at the front of the eye here, And here, this would be the white of the eye. Who would see as the white of the eye. So the clear cornea, then the white of the eye there, and the white of the eye there. This back part we don't see because it's in the bony orbit. Now the lens is supported by suspensory ligaments here. And these suspensory ligaments are, continue, are attached to the lens and to the ciliary body. Because remember we said in here, there are muscles. The ciliary muscles are in the ciliary body. That contains the ciliary body and muscles. So this bit here is the lens. And again, because it's uh, clear, we'll just draw that in uh, yellow, I think. Because that's the, the clear portion. Because the light has to go through there. But of course, the reason that we want the light to go through is to get to the photosensitive or the light sensitive area. So the optic nerve is going to come out here and that's going to continue as neurological tissue around the inside. There's actually an indentation about here in that tissue and it carries on round to there and again on this side the optic nerve comes down and we have the retina just here and that is the the retina 
and the retina is the photosensitive layer. I think I'll maybe draw that in green. So here we have the retina. So this is the optic nerve here. Going down through the optic nerve, down here, in this track down through there, we have the central retinal vein and retinal artery taking blood to the retina. But for now, let's just draw the retina in. So optic nerve there in green, then the retina carries on here in green. The visual part of the retina. So that's the, uh, the retina, just there, the retina, lens, iris. Now in between the uh, iris, I think you can probably see there's a, there's a gap because the iris expands and contracts as we'll see in more detail later. And that gap there, this gap here, is the dark colored, when you look at it, dark colored pupil. So the pupil is the gap in the middle of this iris diaphragm. Now, there's chambers in the eye. This, there's a back, a large back chamber here, which I'm going to draw in light blue. There's a large, chamber at the back and this is the vitreous body it takes up most of the back of the eye so all of this middle part is the vitreous body the vitreous body there we are. Sometimes called the post remal area is the vitreous. And this is gelatinous type material. And this gelatinous type material forms when you're a fetus and you keep it all your life. But again, because it's the retina at the back that is the the retina at the back that is the photosensitive area, and the light's got to go through then the vitreous has to be, again, transparent to let the light through to the retina. And the retina actually continues. I'm, I've drawn the retina finish in there, but the retina actually continues around the ciliary body and the rear surface of the iris there so this is the continuation of the retina but this bit is not photosensitive so this bit here is the non-visual retina so the visual retina goes up to about here it's light sensitive and then the, but it continues on as the non-visual retina around there now there's a fluid that's produced by the ciliary body and this fluid goes into this area here behind the iris so this way the diagram is a little bit complicated so we'll be precise so the posterior chamber is this area here this area just here is the posterior chamber just there and that contains a substance called uh, aqueous humor humor means liquid so this aqueous humor is going to be produced by the ciliary body it's a plasma like substance but lower in protein because if it had too much protein and it would uh, interfere with the transmission of light so it's plasma like and this um, aqueous humour 
Remember the vitreous at the back, the aqueous at the front. This goes round here and it gets into this front part here as well. It's transparent of course. So this is aqueous humour here. And this bit here is the anterior chamber. So let's be clear about that. The posterior chamber is just here, behind the iris. The aqueous humor is produced from the ciliary body, goes into the posterior chamber. Then it comes out through the pupil into the anterior chamber. It's the same fluid, but it's in that chamber there. And then there's kind of a lymphatic vessel here at the junction between the sclera and the, um, the clear bit at the front, the cornea. There's a junction there. That's called the uh, scleral venous sinus. So again, let's be precise. This is the scleral venous sinus here and here at the front of the eye. Here and here, it's a circle that goes all the way around. In the old days, the scleral venous sinus used to be called the canal of Schlem. And actually, although it's called a venous sinus, it's more of a lymphatic really. But what actually happens is the aqueous humor is reabsorbed into the scleral venous sinus. And from there it does drain into a popper vein, so there's this constant circulation. And we'll see in the next clip what happens when that goes wrong. Now, these ligaments supporting the lens from between the ciliary body with the ciliary muscles and the lens, these are called the suspensory ligaments. So again, to be precise, these are the suspensory ligaments here and here, and they're made up of what's called the zonular fibers. So they are the suspensory ligaments because they are suspending the lens. Suspensory ligaments, zonular fibers. Now in this area here at the back of the eye, there's a high density of the photosensitive cells called the uh, cones, cones for colour vision, this area here. And in the very centre of this, it's called the yellow spot, it's not that yellow, it's just a tiny bit yellow really. Macula lutea is that area here, the yellow spot, very high in cone cells for colour vision. But the very highest concentration is in that little indentation there. And to be precise, that little indentation there is the fovea centralis. So that is the fovea centralis just there. Part of the visual retina. But as we've said, the non-visual retina goes on to line the ciliary body and the inside of the iris. So this is non-visual retina, just there. And at the back, as we've said, we have the optic nerve. Much more on that later on. Fascinating course of the optic nerve. Taking the Electrical impulses with the visual information away towards the brain, but as we've said at the same, same time, containing the central retinal artery, taking the blood supply to the retina, to the retinal arteries. And you can see these with an ophthalmoscope, they're quite beautiful to look at. And the veins draining away as well, the optic nerve. And then at the front of the eye, 
we have another layer called the conjunctiva. <coughs> now the conjunctiva, um, we'll start here, the thin layer that goes over the front of the eye, in this bit here. And this bit is the white of the eye, and it's the same on this side. So it goes over the white of the eye. And then it folds back. It folds back on itself like this. And where it folds back is inside the eyelids. There we have the eyelid with the eyelashes here. This eye is almost closed, isn't it? So this would be the eyelid. This would be another eyelid here. Of course, they're in much closer proximity to the front of the eye. And the front of the cornea here, although it's not technically con uh, conjunctiva, it forms part of what's called the conjunctival sac. So here you can see we have um, we have a whole area now we have the conjunctiva arising here the conjunctiva carries on this is all conjunctiva lining the eyelids so we have a conjunctival sac so when people get things in their eyes, often they get caught up here or here, but they don't go around the back because they can't get past the conjunctival sac. So there we have some of the main components. Sclera, the fibrous layer. Choroid there in red, the vascular layer. Fovea centralis, yellow spot retina, the visual retina, and the non-visual retina, posterior vitreous chamber, optic nerve, ciliary body and ciliary muscles here, non-visual retina carrying on round here, aqueous humour produced in the posterior chamber here, and circulating through to the anterior chamber. That's the anterior chamber. That's the posterior chamber just there and there. That can go in there. Cornea, the clear area at the front. Suspensory ligaments here and here, holding the lens in place between the ciliary bodies. Pupils, the little gap at the front between the bits of the iris. Scleral venous sinus draining away the aqueous humour. Conjunctiva, this layer lining the white of the eye. The lens, that clear bit there to focus the light and the iris, that coloured part at the front of the eye. So that's a look at the anatomical structures. Um, you have to learn these if you're going to understand the functions of the eye. That's the basic anatomy to start with. And as I say, no substitute for drawing your own pictures. And in the next clip, we'll look at uh, the physiological function of these components.